I'm Alice. And I'm Greg. And today we're in Barcelona. We literally just got off the metro and stepped out and saw... This, the Sagrada Familia. La Sagrada Familia is the largest unfinished Catholic church in the world. It is impressive in size and detail. It has been under construction since 1882. So that crane you see there, making our picture not as cute as it could be, is actually just helping to move things along. The Virgin Mary Tower was just recently completed. It's the one with a star at the top. So I don't know what Gaudi was thinking, but I see teeth up there. Tell me if you agree. It looks like molars and different bicuspids and cuspids and... <laughs> You'll notice long lines of people waiting to get in. Be sure to reserve your visit in advance. We booked our tour online. Our tour is at 5.15. They gave us access at 4.30, so we have about 45 minutes to look around this awe-inspiring cathedral. It's hard to gauge the size of this place. The ceiling feels impossibly high. I think it's good that we have some time to just look around on our own before the tour guide leads us through this space because it allows us time to lollygag and dwell on things that catch our eye and spark our own imaginations. Like that centerpiece over there. I keep seeing Jesus parasailing when I look at the altar. I know that's not what it's meant to convey and I mean no disrespect. This piece just shows Jesus in a different light. The light filtering in through the stained glass is beautiful. There are many tourists, but also a few people who sit in prayer, or just because they're tired. There's a lot of focus on the Holy Family, hence the name of the church, Sagrada Familia but also quite a bit on the Twelve Apostles, in particular the four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, it's time for the tour. Let's learn some stuff. The vision and design for Sagrada Familia is credited to Antoni Gaudí, who is lead architect for a substantial part of the church's construction. He took over the project in 1883, combining Gothic style with elements of Art Nouveau. Gaudí devoted the remainder of his life to this project, and at the time of his death in 1926, less than a quarter of the project was complete. Despite its importance and brilliance, this church is a basilica, not a cathedral, proving once again that it's not all about size. Barcelona already has a cathedral, which is the seat of the Archbishop of Barcelona. It's called Cathedral of the Holy Cross and Eulalia. We did not go there. Gaudí worked with models rather than formal blueprints, so we saw small-scale models of what he imagined for this cathedral. Subsequent architects and builders have used those models as inspiration, but they have also contributed their own creativity to this project. Here's a view of the cathedral from the back. This facade shows scenes from the crucifixion and is done in a completely different style from the front. I wasn't really familiar with the work of Gaudi until this visit, and I was blown away. When I told my friend Marise that I was coming to Spain, her advice was, see everything Gaudi, and it was the best advice ever. Following Marise's advice, we took the metro from Sagrada Familia to Casa Batio, and on the way, we ran into the sidewalk book fair. Books are such exciting and beautiful things. I'm glad there's still people in the world who appreciate them. We knew we wouldn't have enough time to do everything Gaudi, but since both Alice and I had seen photos of Casa Batio, we decided to make that our next stop. We did not buy tickets in advance for this, and the price for the basic admission was pretty steep. As we walked into the first room on the ground floor, we began to feel gradually transported into another world. 
The wavy woodwork and the crackled walls reminded me of being underwater. The walls looked a little bit like the inside of a pool. But once you get up to the first floor, you can really appreciate the attention to detail that Gaudi put into his designs. This built-in fireplace nook made us wish that we could cuddle up by the fire on a cold night. Yeah, with some marshmallows. <laughs> Make some s'mores. The main living room is pretty impressive too. That swirling ceiling and that jaw-dropping front window. Wow. These windows open upward on an ingenious pulley system. So cool. There's a feeling that this house is meant to resemble an, an aquatic creature, a sea creature. Oh, right? is it? I yeah, don't know. So you'll see a lot of these organic shapes throughout the house. Well, there's those scales too yeah. on the roof. Folks. It's like we want living, to get ahead of ourselves. It's like a living being. This was the home of the Bayou family. It's a sort of a remodel of an older building. Mr. Batyo purchased the home in 1903 and hired Gaudi for the project, which initially entailed demolishing the building. Thanks to the courage shown by Gaudi, the demolition of the house was ruled out and it was fully refashioned. Gaudi completely changed the facade and redistributed the internal partitioning, expanding the atrium or internal patio so that more light could pour in. One could say those internal staircases and the internal patio are flooded in light. There does seem to be a water theme underlying this design. There's a cool light installation that mimics the flow of water on the wall, along with the soundtrack of water pouring down. It's a great piece of multi-sensory special effects. I also like the little dramatizations that they have in some of the rooms. They kind of help you imagine how the room could have been set up and what it was used for. And they have actors that play the parts of the family. So it, it just gives you a feel to what this house was like when it was inhabited. The dining room exits into the backyard, but there are two large pillars in front of the double doors. This was an intentional structural support. Maybe, but I suspect that with children in the house, it may have been a way to slow them down, especially if they came running indoors from the outside patio. And they'd smack into those columns and <laughs> oh, go a, down hard. That's one way to slow them down. <laughs> All right. So, Greg, what did you think of Casa Vallejo? I thought it was expensive, but if you're a fan of architecture, especially organic architecture, or you're a fan of Gaudi, it's a definite don't miss in Barcelona. It, I, I agree. I loved it. It's one of the, my favorite places so far. If you enjoyed our little tour of Barcelona and a peek into the mind of Gaudi, please give us a thumbs up. Next week we'll be in Basque Country, so be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you can join our adventure. We'll see you again next week. It's a video. <laughs> <laughs>